the Lord. Yes, you have the word. Praise the Lord. Yes, you have the word. I can't hear you. Praise the Lord. Yes, you have the word. That's not enough. Praise the Lord. Yes, you have the word. Is worthy to be praised. Can you come next to me here? I want to see, I want to be near you. Praise the Lord. It's a great honor to be in the presence of God. Before anything, it is a great honor to be in the presence. The presence of God is here. The presence of God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. And let me assure you today, before I even go any further. I'm going to share a story. As you stand up, don't see. I have a brother. He's in the UK. I love him so much. Recently he came back. And we went out to eat something. And while we were eating, we had a conversation. That conversation was very interesting. The conversation was very interesting. So, he told me that after he works out, exercise, because he's a body trainer, he has a big body. As to leave you. He carries machines. He said after carrying machines, he always goes and gets a hot shower. A hot shower. So I told him that, brother, it's not healthy to shower, to have a hot shower after lifting weights. And he told me, why? So I told him, I checked on Google. And Google said, that when you take a hot shower after the workout, it breaks down your nerves. So you need a lukewarm shower, but not a hot shower. I'm after getting you. I receive. I tell you, private jet. We receive. Hey, yo, yo, hey, yo, yo. Your name is on it. Hallelujah. Amen. Back to the story. He asked me a question. Who told you that a hot shower is not good? I told him Google says. He said, Who is Google? Who put that information in Google? And where did he get the research? I was perplexed. Because I was giving him information based on a source that I was not sure about. So, this story is interesting. He asked me, tell me your story. Share with me your story. Have you taken a cold or lukewarm shower after a workout? That is the story I need to hear. I don't want you to tell me about Google. Tell me your story. Share with me your experience. And then I started sharing the experience. How I used to go and work out. And I would take warm showers. And I would feel refreshed. And I would feel energized. And I would have a good night's sleep. He said, that is what I was waiting for. I wanted experience. So 
today as we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit as we arise in the power of the Holy Spirit it is not about theory it is not Bible school it is not Google I want you to experience the Holy Spirit so today I want you to have the experience by the end of this service my assurance to you that you are going to partake of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and you are going to rise up and take your place in the mighty name of Jesus so I'm not here to preach theology. I'm not here to talk about what someone talked about I'm here to share with you the mysteries I'm here to share with you testimonies mysteries to show you what God can do in your life in Jesus name now I would like to thank God for this opportunity that he has given me to stand before the great ministers of the gospel. I have been following them for a long time. I'm inspired. Sometimes I, I, I have restless nights. Because I see them praying in the bushes. When I was moving with my brother in the car, I told him I always see them praying. And I'm wondering what kind of strength do they have to move in the bushes at night? Now I know it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit of God. Pastor Grace, Grace, Bishop Grace, Bishop Grace, God bless you, and the first lady, you guys are, she's the first and last. <laughs> Anointing flows from the head. So this same anointing, this love, this affection, this anointing is going to come on all of you. Even the children will partake of it. No one will ever struggle in your marriage. Those of you who are single, the Lord is going to locate you. The third thing. Look at your neighbor. Say divine connection. Divine. Divine connections mean that it is divine. It's not by human strength. So the Lord has connected us. Not because of my wanting goal, his one. But because there is the divine path. That is going to go from generation to generation. Let's give God a mighty hand clap. I would like to appreciate every minister, worship team, pastoral team. You people do mighty things to support the man of God and the woman of God. They cannot do it without you. Remember, God uses people and you are the people that God is using to support the vision. 20, 30, 20, 40, 20, 50. The vision will keep going because of you. Clap for yourself. Amen. You can have your seats.
and finally the guest of honor the chief Holy Spirit let's rise up and give the Holy Spirit Let's lift our hands up. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Manifest yourself in our lives. Let us experience you today. Let us experience your power. Let us experience your presence. Let us experience your grace. Let us experience your love. Let us experience your kindness. Father, we are going to break through tonight. We are breaking through tonight. We are not going to break through, but we are breaking through. This is a faith confession. We believe that things are going to change. By the end of this service, I believe most of you are going to get 100% of the things that you believe in God. 100%. And then number two, you're going to have overflow. Overflow. More than expected. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's amen. give God a mighty oh. Hallelujah. You can have this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So today I did not move alone. I moved with my brother. Please wave up to your people. He's called, you can have your seat. He's called James. James. Chanzi. Chanzi. Yes. Yes, this is James Chanzi. And he's uh, a very humble man. Very humble. And uh, by the grace of God. I've always moved with him by the grace of God in different countries. I have been with him. He follows me. <laughs> so even today he had uh, many programs. But he turned down the programs. And he said, I will come where you go. They call him an armor-bearer. Yes. So he's uh, a blessed man. And I really want to appreciate you publicly before everyone that you have been and you are a blessing to me. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you've supported me for over 20 years in ministry. 20 years. 20 years. And I will share with you a story that will touch you. One time he was in China. <laughs> He was in China, and uh, I was stuck financially. I was in Uganda, and the little money he was remaining with, he sent it for me. He said, take care of your problems. No one does that. No one. People like to give when there is abundance. But that little you that, have. that is the test of your faith. Elijah. Remember the story of Elijah. And the widow. That little oil that you have. 
That's what you are going And then you with your child die. And God said, give it out to the man of God. So I would like to thank God that so many, many experiences I've been through as a man. And my young brother has been there for me. He's, he's the last born. Last born of six. But he's a son God has used him mightily. May God bless you, brother James. Yeah. Welcoming our no. This is all. My name is Apostle Edmund Charles. And I will share briefly my story. Because experience if someone tells you what they have been through most probably you relate to it but if someone read you notes you will not understand anything because those notes don't relate to you so I gave my life to Jesus when I was in senior one that is when the Lord called me around 97 97 uh, yeah and the Lord started dealing with me as a young man. He started doing a work in me. He started dealing with my heart. Let me tell you this. If the Lord hasn't done a work in your heart, even if doors open for you, even if I give you a visa to Canada, and if I give you a visa to the US, you will still suffer. You will still suffer. The doors are open, but God is continuously working in your heart. So that was my journey. The Lord started working on my heart, showing me how to serve, showing me how to give, showing me how to be compassionate, showing me how to forgive, showing me how to be pure sexually, sexual purity. Purity. Because that's one of the things that the enemy is hitting on young people in the ministry. Many young people. The Lord dealt with me in that. The Lord continued dealing me with my attitude. And I can tell you. I completed high school as a preacher at Old Kampala Secondary School. I was there while others were going to the clubs, drinking, I was going to scripture union. I was encouraging, you know, students to abstain from sex before marriage. I was encouraging them to stop smoking, to stop drinking, to obey their parents in school, in high school. Because the Lord was working on my heart. Throughout my high school, the Lord started using me to touch lives. But not in the way that you know. Some of you think that the great men are the ones that drive big cars, V8, V8. Benconi. Benconi also. Jesus did not come riding a horse. Yes, they had Janga Horse. He came riding on a donkey. 
There is a difference between a horse and a donkey. A horse then was the Mpenkoni. If you came on Balas in Jesus' days, you were really powerful. But just a donkey. So this was the heart that Jesus was instilling in me. That I want you to drive the V8. I want you to fly planes. But that's not the point. The point is your heart. Where is your heart? You can have all these things. But your heart. So the Lord started transforming me up to today. And I thank God for the journey. It has not been easy. Because the moment you set out to serve God, the attacks intensify. When you look at this wonderful team, some of you see them and you think everything is okay. You think they have money on their bank account. You think they have iPhones, smartphones. You think they stay in mansions. But every day it is by the grace of God. It's because the Lord has worked in them. And the Lord is working in them. And the Lord is working in us. That is why we are here. So I felt in my heart that I needed to share with you the importance of opening your heart. Today, I am just asking you to open up your heart. Because the Lord is doing a work in your life today. And I want to assure you you're not going to go back home the same. And I want to assure you, for some of you who have a rebellious spirit, today we are dealing with it. The spirit of rebellion, which started from Lucifer, we are dealing with that spirit today. Because the opposite of rebellion is obedience. Some of you are told to go A and you end up going B. Because you are rebellious. It's a spirit. So today we are dealing with it. And because of that spirit in your life, you're not going to levels. You're not getting your promotion. You're not growing spiritually. Because you are rebellious. Today there is going to be a submission to the Holy Spirit. Because if you want to work the Holy Spirit, you need to submit. You need to open your heart and say, Holy Spirit, I don't know anything. I'm open to you. In Jesus' name. The second spirit we are dealing with today is the spirit of lust. When I talk about lust, some people think of sex. No. It's beyond that. The lusts of the flesh. Some of you think it's sexual. But the last is the strong admiration. You want to please yourself instead of pleasing God. Lasting up after material things. Lasting after girls, boys, money. Being consumed by that is a spirit. It is a spirit. 
Today we are dealing with it. The Holy Spirit is restoring holiness. The angels in heaven say, Holy, holy. That is what we are going to see today. Holiness restored in the body. Lastly, unforgiveness. What I'm saying right now is what the Spirit has laid on my heart. Unforgiveness. And then I see people here struggling. Struggling with the past. The Lord wants to take you forward. But you're still holding on to your past. You don't want to move forward. The Lord wants to set you free today. Today, I see freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, children of God, today I see freedom. It doesn't matter how many years you've been saved, but every time you want to move forward, the Lord tells you to release that pain. You don't want to release it. You're holding on to it. Today is your day of release. I want you to be released. To be free like a bird. Like an eagle. Flying free in spite of the winds. I want you to fly. You've been held down for long. And the Lord is going to heal you from that pain. I see pain in the hearts of men and women here. You know yourself. I will call you out. I will pray with you. We have anointing oil. I will pray for you. You need to be released. You need to experience a release. Have you seen a bird that has been caged for a long time? When it is released, it even can't move it's confused it doesn't understand freedom 